this time the pavali seems to be very confusing to people and uh, today is krishna chaturdashi roop chaturdashi narak chaturdashi whatever you may call it is supposed to be today and deepavali there are some distinctions between deepavali is on 31st or deepavali is on 1st so roop chaturdashi or narak chaturdashi or so there are two three concepts regarding it today is considered an unfortunate day apparently some will believe that on this narak chaturdashi day yamaraj yama the lord of death comes to earth and to keep him away you light a lamp near you know some you light a lamp deepam around place of garbage or you see sewage etc i believe the purpose is because chaturmas is there right the these are all the months of chaturmas it starts with pitru paksha which is considered in auspicious followed by navratri that is followed by deepavali and lot of festivals are there right chaturmas is basically in hindu uh, custom chaturmas is considered as a bad time weak time negative time and to keep the negativity from attacking you in this particular time and for the remaining of the year we do a lot of spiritual practices at this point of time right so the purpose of roop chaturdashi <coughs> sorry i am having some cough since 9 days now so apparently you will have to work with it so nine uh, right so this time the negative energy is on high and to make sure see like you know the vedic concept and the modern concept also is that the fire repels or destroys the bacteria as right that's why you boil water before drinking it so we light a lamp around you know dustbin garbage sewage to keep the you know harmful bacteria and viruses away from home is the signification for today some people believe that because yama is visiting on earth you know india different lands different parts of india different customs are there some people believe that because yama is visiting the earth then sisters are also visiting the earth and to because the lamp is lighted generally in the southern direction right southern direction is considered the direction of yama and death and everything so it is believed that your ancestors are visiting you at this point of time and to make sure that they visit and they remain happy you light a lamp so today we are here to study bhagavad gita and you see bhagavad gita starting arjun is thinking about ancestors only right this is the only thing related to dharma or you say related to remedies that he have talked about right ancestors lineage the dharma and the kula parampara getting destroyed hinduism it is believed that whoever listens to the glories of shri vishnu the earlier seven generations and the next seven generations get emancipation so today by studying and discussing the bhagavad gita we are doing very good for the ancestors right so it should be considered a spiritual sadhana for that matter though i don't like this heavy word of sadhana as such right because sadhana the word itself means that you will be able to do it right sadhana means you know you are in the process of winning it and there is nothing to win right it is just the original nature of the person that one have to realize and even if you do that you apparently do not win over anything regarding deepavali question is there so tomorrow so let's technically go into it i am using chandrahari you know that so around uh, we are going hour by hour i am taking the place for dehradun you can see my screen now so for dehradun and apparently this should be same throughout the india so around 5:17 pm tomorrow on 31st october amavasya should start technically right 5:17 pm amavasya should start sunset is happening at 527 pm right so amavasya is starting just before the sunset tomorrow on 31st of october 
and on 1st november amavasya should be there till 817 around right 817 we can be more precise about it but roughly take 817 815 right 810 around where the sunset is happening at 526 pm some people i have also came across multiple multiple opinions i do not want to take names big names so let's not take it because bhagavad gita we are studying so kya animation imiti some people are going by the concept that in the case of an asuddha tithi or in the case of an elongated tithi, the first tithi is the ashuddha tithi and the next tithi is taken, right? So if a month is elongated or if a tithi is elongated, the first one is taken as extra and second one is taken as nitya, constant, right? But for it to be an elongated tithi, it should touch two sunrise that it is not doing. It is only touching one sunrise that is of the first November. Right, so it is not any ashuddha tithi for that matter. It is a pure pure shuddha tithi. Now, in the case whether you should celebrate the Pavali on the first of November or thirty first of October, my opinion is very personal. You are all ready to disagree. Okay, thank you. Mujko, what I believe there is a long debate since ages regarding what should be taken as the original time to celebrate the Hindu, you know, celebrations, etc. Multiple opinions are there. Some will tell, you know, follow this Siddhant, follow this Panchang, follow that Panchang, this, that. And they are all talking on the technical aspects of it. I don't understand if the people are so Hindu-centric. Why don't they produce a research that we have made 20 people follow our Panchang for 10-15 years and they have seen better results of worship, etc. in their life as compared to others who are not following. Once you produce such research, then it will become you know, something which is worth talking about, right? Only talking of technical aspect, this Siddhant is correct, this Siddhant is correct, does not make sense because anyone, right, it is very childish to accept that anyone who is following a Siddhant, maybe that person do not know, but the Siddhant have some authority into it, right? So shlokas and other things, many people can come with it. Now, technically speaking, for any Vrat, Upavas, etc., etc., the Tithi at the time of sunrise is taken to be the Supreme. Right, Tithi, whatever Tithi is at the sunrise, takes the Tithi for the day. So at the time of sunrise, the Amavasya is on 1st of November. So technically, 1st of November should be considered as Amavasya. Right. But the point is, I believe, the worship of Goddess Kali in Bengal, Lakshmi for rest of the India, as well as North India, should be done on Amavasya and the worship is done in night. Worship is not done in daytime. So on 1st of November, the Amavasya is getting over around 8.15 p.m. So rest of the night, there is not Amavasya, right? So if you do Deepavali on 1st of November, you are technically doing it in Pratipada when you are doing it in the night. In the daytime, you are celebrating, it is all okay, but I don't know what people celebrate in daytime in Deepavali, right? This is done in night, right? Generally in Kali Yuga, all the festivals are done in night, right? Ekadashi is done in night, Purnima is done in night, right? Shivaratri is done in night, Navaratri is done in night, right? Kali Yuga night is the Pradhan one, right? Sur Siddhant also tells you that Kali Yuga 12 p.m., 12 in the midnight, 12 a.m. is very important, right? Mm -hmm. Midday is not. 6 in the morning was very important in Satya Yuga and uh, things keep on changing, all sort of things, right? So because the purpose is to worship the goddess in night. I believe 31st. When the Amavasya is for the complete night, right? From the moment of sunset to the moment of sunrise. Because Amavasya is there on 31st. I believe that all the worship etc. related to Deepavali you should do on 31st. Right? Celebration of Deepa celebration of Deepavali etc. you should do on 31st. Is what I believe. Right? I follow a religious organization. Ramakrishna Mission, they are also doing it on 31st. Right? I am not concerned about what the organization is doing. I am concerned about what my opinion is. This is my opinion. Right? That is one thing. Apparently, you want to eat sweets and you want to do some firecrackers. Do it on both the days. The more the merrier. It is all good. Right? But worship procedure, right? If you are technically talking about worship, if you want to worship goddess on night in Amavasya, then night 
and Amavasya is 31st of October, not the 1st of November. That is there. Now, in this 31st of October, the sunset is happening at 5.27 p.m. So, we start from 5.27 p.m. The time that I am telling you apparently is for the uh, Dehradun. So, it little bit adjustment for will be for your place. Now, when to worship a goddess Lakshmi, two muhurtas are there. Generally, Lakshmi, you want the Lakshmi to be fixed. You want the Lakshmi to be Stara Lakshmi, to be with you. To make sure that the Lakshmi remains with you, Lakshmi remains sthir, what you do is you worship goddess Lakshmi in a fixed Rashi. When a fixed Rashi is rising in the ascendant, right? This is what you do. Rest other things you cannot do. The Tithi is fixed, the Nakshatra etc. is fixed. So you cannot do many things into it, right? What you can change or you say your authority is or the free, free part it is only the Lagna. And generally, it should be done in a fixed lagna. So, sunset on 31st October is happening in Aries Ascendant, Varni Nakshatra. Taurus is the next fixed ascendant, which starts from 6.20 p.m. There are time. Which starts with Mercury Hora. Hora is important. It starts with Mercury Hora. This ends at 8.15 p.m. in Santa Nora. So Mercury Hora, Moon Hora, Saturn Hora, three Horas will be there. Those who want to do the worship in evening, I believe right from the starting of the Taurus Ascendant. Because Saturn Hora is anyhow not good. And Hora is given very high importance in Vedic Astrology. You people to know, right? you are my students, you know that. So right from the beginning of Taurus Ascendant at 6.20 p.m. Now the time of starting the worship Taking the Sankalp is important. After that, the Tithi, Muhurta, etc. may change. It does not matter. When you start it is of utmost importance, right? For example, some people may worship for 3-4 hours. Now in this 3-4 hours, you know, you cannot decrease your time of worship just because, you know, the Muhurta is not lasting for long. Right? So let's not go by this concept. So at 6.20 p.m., Taurus Ascendant is starting with Mercury Hora, that is good. And all up to the end of Moon Hora, that is the Moon Hora is ending at just a second. All up to Moon Hora, which is ending at, I believe, uh, 7.35, right? Up to 7.35, you can do the worship. This will be all Taurus Ascendant, which is good. Right, the Navamsha will start from all the way from Capricorn, goes all up to Cancer. In between that, I believe Vargottam Lagana is good. Vargottam Lagana is always good. Vargottam Lagana gives you Raja Yoga. You want Raja Yoga in your life. So I believe a Vargottam Taurus for evening worship, a Vargottam Taurus from 7 8 45 pm till the next 15 minutes will be the best time to worship. Uh, Sri Lakshmi in the in the evening time. So that will be 7 8 pm in the next 15 minutes. That should be Taurus Ascendant Vargottam Moon Hora. Best time to do. Moon also indicates wealth. At this point of time, you can worship a goddess. Right. And uh, worshipping the goddess, my recommendation is please chant Sri Suktam. The best remedy that I can tell you for goddess Lakshmi rest or so other remedies, etc., can be there by the end of the session. Maybe we can discuss it. Right. Completing the session is my prime purpose for today. So let's not elongate this discussion for long. Right. By the end of it, we may discuss a few things. Right. On the first, because daytime, there is Amavasya. Right. I told you we will do a class on Deepavali. Let's do it on the first. Daytime, there is Amavasya. Daytime, we talk. Even the night time also we can talk. We can do what we can do. We can do what we can do. You can do any time. Right. Thinking about God, you can think any time about God. For formal worship procedure, you need a Mahurta. That is one thing. Taurus Ascendant. Another Ascendant, Fixed Ascendant that comes is Leo Ascendant. Leo Ascendant starts at 12.52 am. Right? 12.52 am it will start with Mercury Hora. And it will end to 3.11 am. Right? In Saturn Hora. So once again Mercury Moon Saturn. So this is another time that can be taken 
midnight time if you want to take you should take leo ascendant which starts from 12:52 am and because this also starts with mercury hora 12:52 am moon hora it will start from moon hora 23, 26, uh, 0, 36, uh, it's starting with uh, Mercury Hora, yeah. It's starting with Mercury Hora, 10, 36, because it's starting with Mercury Hora. Okay, must. So starting from this Leo Ascendant, which is at, uh, starting at 12.52 in the midnight, till the end of moon hora right which will which you can find out till the end of moon hora you should do it and once again in leo ascendant also a speciality with leo it beginning of the leo ascendant will be leo ascendant and capricorn navamsh which uh, leo ascendant and aries navamsh which will be exaltation for the lord of leo's son that is good leo virgo is another good time that you can take but certainly if you are worshiping in midnight you are only worshiping for a long time so that long time you can take. So second is Leo Ascendant, which starts from 12.52 in the night. And first is the Taurus Ascendant that we have discussed about. Any Ascendant after that, next fixed Ascendant will be Scorpio. No, because Scorpio is the Ascendant. Scorpio is the debilitation sign of Moon and Moon indicates wealth. I don't prefer Scorpio at the first place. Secondarily, Scorpio will rise at 7.51 in the morning. It will be sunrise by then. So night will be over. Right. So either Leo Ascendant you can choose or Taurus Ascendant you can choose. For people who cannot worship very much late in night, Taurus Ascendant is best. Otherwise, Leo Ascendant is best. Any of that you may want, you can choose that. Right. The thing that I will recommend is Sri Suktam you should do. Other recommendations, many other things are there, which we may discuss by the end of the session. Right. So, that we will do. This is your Deepavali. <laughs> Whether you should Laksh worship Lakshmi or you should worship Kali, that is all up to you. Anyone that you want that you can worship. A small tip is there. So, though the opinion is that the goddess that comes in Durga Shaptashiti. And the goddess otherwise are different goddesses. It is believed this way. Some, some people believe it this way. Yes. Let's go download. Excellent. Hmm. Yeah. So though it is believed that the goddess that is mentioned in Durga Shaptashati and the goddess that is otherwise are two different goddesses, right? The Kali mentioned in Durga Shaptashati is a different Kali and other Kali is a different Kali, though it is mentioned. But still. So Durga Shaptashati, three charitras are there. Right? First chapter is of Kali. Second, third, fourth chapter is for Mahalakshmi. Fifth chapter onwards is for Saraswati. So three parts it is in. Now from the, the stuti of the first part is also very popular. The, stu, the stuti from the part of Kali is also very popular. The stuti from the part of Saraswati is also very popular. It is featured extra outside of Saptashati also. Namo Devya, Ma Devya, Sivaya, Sattam, Nama, Nama, Prakriti, Bhadrai, Niyata, Pranata, Smatam. That is there. Right. That uh, other, like these come, these are out, right. Tantruk, Devi, Suktam. And in all of these totras, these two are out. But from the Mahalakshmi part, from the Mahalakshmi kandam in between, the stuti that comes in Mahalakshmi kandam, in all the three kandams, there are stutis. So for the Mahalakshmi form, which features in the middle part of Saptashati, there is a stuti done by gods. Which, if you look at the book of Durga Saptashati, general book I am referring to, certainly you may refer to a special book that may have it. And I am talking of the general book which many people refer to. You know I don't want to take the name. Dosha open karna hota hai, naam lene ki koshish mein kami karta ho. Hain, tarif karni ho to bhar bhar ke naam le lunga ho, koi baat nahi hai. Right, so in, in the middle section, in the Mahalakshmi section, there is a stuti. 
which is generally not given, but I believe that Stuti, because first of all, that is for Mahalakshmi. So that Stuti is very good. It is a part of Saptashati. This is called Shakradi Stuti. Shakra is Indra, right? Shakradi Stuti. So I believe Shakradi Stuti. If you, if you read Saptashati, right? If you know how to read Sanskrit, pronounce Sanskrit, Shakradi Stuti is what you should do. Right, from the fourth chapter it is Sakradeha Surgana Nihate Ati Virya Hai Tasmindratmani Surari Balecha Devya Tam Tushtuvaha Pranati Nambra Siro Dharamsa Vagbihi Praharasa Pulukodgam Charu Deha. This is the right particular, I will not read complete of it for you. Right, this Sakradi Stuti you should do. This is a particular website that I refer to, right? So from there you will get the Sakradi Stuti in it. English in the Romanized version or any local language you can also get it. Shakradi Stuti is something that I will recommend. Shakradi Stuti you should do. Shakradi Stuti is very good. Right. Apart from Shakradi Stuti, the uh, Sri Suktam is there. Sri Suktam you should do. Lakshmi Gayatri is there. Lakshmi Gayatri you can do. These mantras you can do certainly. Right. So that is there. Vishnu Sastranam. Right. I have recently recommended Vishnu Sastranam. Right. Vishnu Sastranam if you are doing. Do Vishnu Sastranam three times on Deepavali, very good time. Right, because you want to please Lakshmi, please Vishnu also, and husband, wife, both you will please. So, you know, in, in, in a family, if the husband is not happy, wife is happy, it is very unlikely that she will come because husband is not happy. No, husband will stop her, she will listen to her husband. So, make Vishnu happy as well. So, Devi Devta, I say, kya baat hai na? husband, wife, unme to kya hi chalta hai? Some, many people make and elaborations like this hai na ki lakshmi ko agar khush karna hai to unke pati ko bhi khush karoge nahi to lakshmi nahi aayegi matlab aisa to aisa pati patni wala sambandh nahi hai na aapke hamare jaisa matlab hai na matlab lakshmi khush hai to vishnu bhi khush hai aisi koi baat nahi but still right so worshiping sri vishnu is also good ek bahut acha point hai in the shiv tandav stotram in the last it is told that istra lakshmi istra lakshmi the word is there so shiv tandav stotram is also very good to please lakshmi so Shiv Tandav you can also do. Okay, so these are three four stotras that I will recommend. You want to spend more time, you want to worship for three four hours, do do the stotras and repetition. Odd number of repetition, once twice, once thrice, five times, seven times, right? So what you do, you do Sri Suktam eleven. You Sri Suktam sixteen mantras are there, right? You do Sri Suktam sixteen times. Vishnu Sastranam three times. The Shiva Dandav Stotram 11 times, it will take a lot of time. So the complete the complete span of the either the Leo Lagna or the Taurus Lagna will be over. So that also you can do. Right. And that will, God willing, it will give you the blessings of Goddess. What I have believed that spiritual practices done with 100% faith surely show the result. The only thing that is needed is 100% faith. Many people are like, I worship God, nothing good happens in my life. This cannot happen, good happens in life. Either the person is not careful about that or the person have a lot of high expectations. That is the problem. You do it with 100% faith. Do not have high expectations and be aware of what is happening in your life. You will certainly see that there are changes. The only thing is that you should do something on appropriate time. Right? Things should be done on appropriate time is the basic point. That is needed. Right. Otherwise, see, I believe if the Rishis have said something, it works. Only if the time is not suitable, it is not working for you. So do it at right point of time and it will show result in the first go itself. No matter how bad are the karmas of the person, it shows the result in the first go. There should be 100% faith and there should be no apparently visible mistake. Certainly while chanting, one, two words can be pronounced incorrectly. Some saliva may come out of mouth. These are all things. These things are normal, right? So, okay. God will also forgive you this. But abusing people, getting angry on people, watching at your phone, sleeping, etc. are the big mistakes. Mahapatak, right? There are, There is mistake and there is Mahapatak, right? So, don't do a Mahapatak. Then result will be there, right? You should have faith. Don't have faith in me. Have faith in God. Have faith in Rishis, right? So, that, that is what 100% works. Sotaka. इसमें कोई दो राय शकुशु भाषण का नहीं है हमको